Welcome. Today, we'll be replacing a Wi-Fi card inside this Acer laptop. It's an Acer Aspire V Nitro. Serial number VN7-591G-73 Wi-Fi. It's about, about like two and a half, maybe three years old, the laptop at this point. They have notoriously shitty Wi-Fi cards. This one kind of just crapped out, stopped finding signal. So for the time being, I'm using a USB Wi-Fi dongle, but I finally bought the actual replacement chip. Um, this is an Intel dual band wireless. Here's all the information on it. It's a dual card, both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and what. Let's get to taking this thing apart. Maybe 12 screws. Gonna have to undo all of them. Just try to shake them out, I guess. Next. Open the laptop. You're gonna wanna pry very carefully. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver. Probably credit card might work. I also have uh, this prying tool. Like got it one of these times which where I was fixing a cell phone came with the kit pop it off very gently don't force it because underneath this there are ribbon cables and they will snap if you yank this off and then you'll be in a world of hurt trying to source replacement ribbon cables All right. Just have a look-see here. You can see there's one ribbon cable right here. That's for the touchpad. And there's this big ribbon cable right here. That's for the keyboard. Ah, oh, yeah, and then there's this third one. That's probably for the backlight of the keyboard. Gently pop these off. I believe some of them have little tabs that you pop open. Yeah, so... The one for the touchpad has this little tab that you pop off. That's one. The one for the keyboard, I'll just slide that all out, I'm not sure. Yeah, this one just slides right out. And this third one, oh yeah, one other point. Probably a good idea if you're not wearing a ground strap, just touch something that can't get damaged. That's metallic, so you charge yourself to the same potential as the laptop so you don't create some kind of static shock and blow something up because there's a good chance you'll touch the keyboard with your hands. All right, this ribbon cable looks like it slides out, but I'm not sure. Oh, no, it doesn't. This one also has a tab. Okay. And it just comes off just like that. Easy, set that aside, and I already see where the uh, Wi Fi card is. Right here. It looks to be a Philips. Okay. It just slides out like this. You can pop these antennas off. Yep, they just pop off. Remember the order, you probably don't want to mess that up. Closest to you, if you have the laptop facing the right way. First comes the white wire, then comes the black wire. Okay, so here's the old one. I'm gonna compare that to the new one. New one, old one. All right, make sure <laughs> you don't confuse the two. The new one seems to have a little bit of a marker streak on it, so you can identify it as the new one. Pop that one in. Maybe it would have been easier to do the wires first, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put them back into their little slots, put back the screw. All right, now in reverse order, I'm gonna put the keyboard back. As, a, as an aside, this is also a really good time for you to install a new solid state drive or M2 drive, if that's what you want to do. The M2 drive slot is right here, you just pop it right in probably the easier upgrade to do. If you want to replace the hard disk it has in here with a regular, you know, 
small form factor like the Samsung Evo, the 850, 950, that's where it would go. I'm going to start with this big guy. It just wiggles its way in. Do your best not to kink it, of course. Then the ribbon that I believe is responsible for the backlights. Place it in and then clamp it down. There we go. The touchpad ribbon cable. Okay, that's all the ribbons. Oh yeah, now if you want to do a memory upgrade, I believe the RAM is actually on the other side of the motherboard, so you'd have to remove the entire motherboard. Let's close it up. Oops, I hit the power button, but just as well, because before you actually close everything up and screw everything in, it's a good idea to make sure you connected everything properly, so you can see the light works just fine. Obviously, the keyboard works, and the mouse, the touchpad works. Perfect. I'm going to unplug this USB Wi-Fi. Go back in here, launch Wi-Fi. and Not even have to install drivers or anything like that. And here we go. Do we have internet? Yes, we do. So the Wi-Fi worked, but the Bluetooth didn't until I installed the Bluetooth driver straight from the Intel website. I just Googled. Intel Wireless N7265, and I downloaded the Windows 10-bit um, Bluetooth driver. Once I did that, Bluetooth worked perfectly, so that's how you install a wireless card. Now you can reinstall everything, put the screws back. Thanks for watching.